Holy smokes! It's you! Watching me! Wow, cool! Well, hi! Have a good day. No, I'm kidding. Jared Fuller here. Today is Sunday, April 19th, 2020. Thanks for joining me for another installment of the Sunday Video Update. Um, I'm kind of flying solo today. Uh, Amy's in the bedroom. Dad is asleep on the couch. And he might be waking up because I'm talking boisterously. Um, oh, maybe. He might be waking up here. I hope you all had a wonderful week. I hope you're all doing well and uh, keeping your sanity amid this quarantine with the coronavirus. And, uh, yeah, it's it's getting to everybody. It's getting to me. I know for a fact it's getting to me because... Um, you know, I, I normally don't mind sitting home, but for the fact that I've been doing this for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks on end is, and it's kind of getting under my skin. I think finally it's, it's starting to get to me. Um, you know, I've only been, but here's the thing. I still do a central travel. Like I go to the grocery store. Um, we go to the pharmacy if, if we have to pick up prescriptions, um, you know, doctor's appointments, if there are any. Um, so we only do the essential travel, but I've been spending a lot of time at home. And um, today, as a matter of fact, I have to do some more essential travel. I have to uh, go get some groceries. And I guess we're having spaghetti and garlic bread tonight for supper, which sounds good to me. And I'm going to prepare. So, um yeah, so I have to go to the market and get the supplies I need to to prepare that. We have, uh, it's actually Texas Toast garlic bread or whatever you call it. I don't know. It's Texas Toast garlic bread, I guess. That's what you call it. But it's really good. I I don't know if we have the spaghetti rods or not. Um, I'm pretty sure we do, but I might have to buy a fresh box of spaghetti rods. I have to get some pasta sauce. I think we have mushrooms. Because uh, I add mushrooms to my spaghetti. And I think we have Parmesan cheese. So I'm going to have to make a list. <clears throat> and of course I've been getting requests for taco salad. So I'm going to have to get the supplies to prepare that as well. And I don't know. Maybe some other goodies that um, I think we might enjoy. Something that will last us. For a while, anyway. Um, but yeah, the quarantining, the the essential travel. I mean, we have to put qualifiers. We have to somehow justify to one another. Oh yeah, we're out and about, but this is essential. This is, you know, there's there's people out there who are driving around still when we're being urged to stay home to flatten the curve. Um, I've been hearing all kinds of different stories still, just like you are. Um, there's a lot of conflicting stories, a lot of information that we hear something from this source and then this source is reporting something entirely different. So at this point, who do we believe? Um, because here's the thing, too. I was actually having this conversation with a friend of mine last night. Um, a lot of people are passing away. They're dying off. And without actually performing a test or to do an autopsy to see what the cause of death was, they're just rating it off as COVID-19. So how do we know that the numbers of, you know, the number of death, how do we know that that is directly correlated to COVID-19? Now it's hard to say because there's people who are dying um, from other health ailments that has no tie or corroboration with the COVID-19. So, um it's really something to consider, it's something to look into, and, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where you have to kind of, okay, the numbers are out there, we know that COVID-19 is imminent, but is this the correct number of people who have actually passed as a result of COVID-19? We don't know. Um, we'll just have to, I think after, when, when all of this is said and done, we will actually know um, an accurate number of deaths related to COVID-19 will have an, um, an, an accurate number, or at least close to a rough estimate of 
all the cases that were tested positive just in America, and then we'll probably have a global number. Um, so who knows? But anyway, we've been hearing about this COVID-19 stuff for three weeks going on week number four, a whole month. Um, <clears throat> I'm doing okay. Um, for the most part, anyway, I'm, I'm stuck here at the house. And I know, I think it was a couple weeks ago, I said, you know, maybe we should rephrase that. I'm not stuck at home. I'm safe at home. No, I'm cooped at home. Because um, if I don't have to travel, I don't travel. And I think Dad might be waking up. Um, coffee's out there. I made a fresh pot. <clears throat> but I don't know. We're we're doing okay. We're we're hanging in there. And when I do get out, yes, I do have a cough because I'm still dealing with seasonal allergies, <clears throat> as you can tell. Um, I, I'm not experiencing any symptoms of COVID and. People are like, oh, they're, and I've been seeing this on the news. Well, you know, there's people who ha, who are asymptomatic and therefore they don't get tested and then they die from COVID. Well, if you if you are asymptomatic, they, I mean, at first they told you not to be tested. If you're not experiencing the symptoms, don't be tested for it. So if I'm not experiencing the symptoms, how do you know I'm asymptomatic? Because you're telling me to stay home. And if I'm not, you know, only only go out to be tested if I'm experiencing the symptoms, which I haven't been experiencing any of the classic COVID symptoms, um, the high fever, the 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 cough, shortness of breath. <coughs> but <clears throat> this is seasonal allergies, <coughs> so I'm not experiencing shortness of breath or high fevers. But I do have a cough as a result of seasonal allergies. Dad has seasonal allergies. Amy, I know for sure, has seasonal allergies. We all suffer with that. And this is the time of the year where it goes from <clears throat> being cold to being warm to being cold to being warm. So the, the temperature swings can bring on seasonal allergies and it can cause a lot of problems for people who are um, just not you know, fully protected by seasonal allergies. But we can't write off seasonal allergies or every cough or every sneeze or every fever or every bit of shortness of breath as COVID. Because there are people who, um, you know, there's people who experience these and have no COVID going on. It turns out that they don't have it and... Um, it's all very confusing anyway, and uh, that's all we've been hearing about for the past, I don't know, a couple of weeks, or long, actually it's been longer than a couple of weeks, but um, it's only gotten worse progressively, and <clears throat> I'm with you, I, I'm hoping that this goes away soon, I don't want to be stuck in the same predicament dragging on for months and years on end, because summer's coming, I would like to get out. I would like to travel. I'd like to meet some, some of my friends I've been talking to um, for a long time. And there was something that actually happened on Wednesday. Uh, it, was, it made national headlines. It happened here in Michigan. happened in Lansing. It was a protest at Capitol Building. And that was one of the things I wanted to talk about in this week's Sunday video update. Now, I, I, can, I can see both sides of that. Now the people were protesting. Um, they were they were holding a rally at Capitol Building in Lansing because Governor Gretchen Whitmer had extended our uh, stay-at-home executive order until I think the end of the month or until May or something like that. I don't even know for sure, but initially it was until the end of the month. <clears throat> now people were pissed and they're still mad about this because. They, they're, you know, we're being told we can't even go to our, you know, our summer rentals or cottages up north. Um, and, you know, hey, we pay taxes for those. We should be able to go there if we want to. I get it. A lot of people feel downtrodden by our government, thinking that, okay, she's taken away our rights and we can't do this and can't do that. And 
we're here in protest standing up and defending our constitutional rights, which I fully support. <clears throat> I support that wholeheartedly. We have a right in this country to freedom of speech and, and um, among many other rights granted and afforded to us by our Constitution, we are free to, to, to do what we want under the, under the rules of the Constitution or under the uh, amendments of the Constitution. However, and there is a however, <clears throat> this is not a Rosa Parks situation, meaning that while I do understand the importance of civil disobedience in some instances where um, Rosa Parks refused to take a seat in the back, and that brought change, her story and her fight against uh, segregation had brought on change for civil rights. And so that's why she is a very important person to be remembered. But this is not, you know, these are not the same issues. They're not two peas from the same pod. Um, we're talking about a contagion that has killed hundreds of thousands of people globally, um, millions perhaps, um, and, and she's telling us to stay home She's not stripping us of our freedoms or our rights. She's telling us to stay home, to flatten the curve, so that way we can get through this quicker, and then we can reemerge gradually. Um, <clears throat> now, this uh, coronavirus situation has been pernicious for any number of months, and it's, it's only gotten worse by the month, by the day, by the second. And... While I understand that civil disobedience is needed in some cases where we, we uh, bring on change, incremental change, we don't want people telling us what to do. We don't want to be oppressed by our government, and I get it. But I, at the same time, I understand that going out into the public, into the open, mind you, these people weren't wearing masks. They weren't practicing social distancing. <clears throat> They were taking their babies and children out there without masks, without social distancing. Not, you know, they were disobeying the CDC guidelines, and they were just breaking all the rules. And they were tying up traffic. They were causing traffic jams. There was, there was traffic backed up by Michigan Avenue from Capitol Building all the way past Sparrow Hospital to the east. And it made it difficult for Sparrow because the ambulances couldn't get in and out. Emergency medical personnel could not get in or get out with patients. Um, they couldn't get their ambulances in and out. The, the, the employees couldn't get to work. Now, mind you, Dr. Scott and Dr. Gary, my oncologist when I was a child, their practice is across the street from Sparrow at the subspecialties office. And then next to that, you have the Herbert Herman Cancer Center. Those kids need to see their, their oncologists. They need to get their treatment. What if that was, <clears throat> what if what if there was a child that needed, um, they needed to be seen, they needed to be accessed for their vincristine. Well, guess what? You can't get in because people care more about their rights than their health, and everybody has to pay for that. Well, that's that's not the way that should work. And while I do understand, and 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 I pointed this out at the at the very top the very pinnacle of this of this point i i fully support a person's rights to protest peacefully engaging in a, a peaceful protest demonstration however when it simultaneously um brings problems and and causes issues for people who need to get to work our frontline essential workers that's where i draw the line because this is not a situation where we refuse to sit in the back of the bus and you know I because I'm black or whatever I refuse to sit in the back I, I'm taking a front seat this is nothing like that at all we're talking about a contagion a, a, a virus that's claiming lives I, I, I understand both sides and that's why I don't take one side <coughs> but that was the big issue. It happened in Lansing on Wednesday. It made national headlines. We watched it on the CBS Evening News. Um, 
I think it was Nora, Nora O'Donnell, I think, is the new um, host of the CBS Evening News. And they, they talked about it briefly in the beginning of the segment. And then um, they carried on. I guess other states are picking up on this as well. So Michigan may have lit a fire and got other states involved um, with with peaceful. I hope it's been a peaceful protest demonstration. But by what I've been hearing, um, people were actually showing up in Lansing with their AR-15 strapped to their side. I don't know why. It's not a gun rights issue. It's... Um, it's, it has to do with health. It has to do with, hey, we don't like being told to stay home. <clears throat> well, that's, she's doing it for our own good. I like to think that she's doing it for us. She wants to get this gone as much as I do, as much as you do. <clears throat> but I don't know, I don't know how that, um, carrying your AR-15 out in Oakland or out in the open public, I don't know what that has to do with anything. Um, well, and I I talked about that, but I don't know how carrying your AR-15s has anything to do with coronavirus. You're not going to shoot it down out of the sky. And what do you need an AR-15 for anyway? But that's another story for another day. How are you doing, Dad? Yeah, it's been a long, tiring week. Um, so how do you know how long Governor Whitmer extended our uh, stay-at-home executive order? Was that until the end of this month, or did she extend it until May? Or April 30th or 1st of May, which is... Which is in a, a day. Next week. Yeah. Next week. Um, so, yeah, that's that was a big issue going on. Um, some people were messaging me saying, did you hear what happened in Detroit? Uh, what happened in Detroit? I didn't hear anything about anything going on in Detroit. Well, they were protesting. Well, that wasn't Detroit. That was Lansing at our capital. Detroit's not our capital. Um, a lot of people get that confused. Well, it's a big city, yeah. So Grand Rapids is a big city. Uh, it's not our capital. Lansing is our, our state capital. Um, but it was it was... <coughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, there's there's a group, uh, uh, there's a group on Facebook. My friend of mine was telling me that there's a there's a group on Facebook. It's called uh, Michiganders, uh, and I'm paraphrasing. I'm going to get this wrong. Michiganders against excessive quarantine. I think it is. It's a Facebook group. Um, if defend, go ahead. Well, no, it, it's it's this group. They're they're against Governor Whitmer. And, you know, because she's telling us to stay home. And I've already gone over all that. But, again, I, I, I respect anybody who can stand up for our rights collectively. They're our rights. They're not just their rights. or their, It's everybody's rights. I, I fully support our Constitution. Um, I obey the laws the state, on state and federal. Hold on. On state and federal levels. And... It, but at the same time, again, we're talking about a contagion. We're talking about a virus that um, scientific data has shown the progression of the, the cases and the deaths. And the, the irony is, in, you know, it's incredibly thick. You're, you're mad because you're being told to stay home, but yet you're going out to protest being told to stay home. That's like um, protesting against Sears and driving to Sears on your craftsman riding lawnmower. It, it's about the same. Uh, they got their way anyways. Well, they, they may have. About stay at home, but yet right. Yeah, they got their way anyway. You're right. but the, And they may have potentially made it worse for everybody else. I know. Well, I don't know that because we I only know that they extended our or Governor Granholm or Granholm. Holy crap, I'm living in the past. Governor Whitmer extended our stay at home order until April thirtieth. <clears throat> now now it could very well be she might extend it further beyond that. I haven't heard any news about her about an extension um on the stay at home order. But I and I've also heard that um, instead of six feet, now they're saying 
to stay away at least two feet. Or two feet. Well, I, I need more coffee. Thirteen feet. Um, two feet. Where, where did I get? Where did that come from? I don't know. Um, but anyway, that's what I heard. I don't know how true it is. And I, there was an article which I I think is incorrect that the coronavirus doesn't survive in hot, humid conditions. I find that to be incorrect. Because, look at all the states in the south. Yeah. They experience year-round heat. And the, the number of coronavirus cases are higher. Look, look at Texas, look at Florida, look at Louisiana, yeah. and Alabama and Georgia, where it's always hot. It was always hot weather. weather it was like 109 yeah. Uh, yeah. just recently. The coronavirus cases are still on the, on the high, on the high end. In those southern states. I, think it's got to do with the cold I don't know what it has to do with. I'm not going to throw speculation, but what I think is incorrect, and maybe I'm throwing speculation here. But if it if it dies in extremely humid, muggy weather, then why are the cases in the southern states, you know, notably higher? Yeah. See, so yeah, it it kind of no yeah. I'm. I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of curious as to what the answer to that would be. Scientist people, you got an answer for that one? I doubt it. Well, I'm no scientist, but it, it seems. Um, logic. <clears throat> think about it. It's it's kind of it, well. There's nothing to think about. I mean, it's logic, though, if man. if there's if <laughs> if there's high cases of coronavirus in, in the Gulf Coast states and the Southern states, and where it's hot all year round, why? Why are there still why are there still cases of coronavirus in those states, and why are they notably higher in the southern states than anywhere else? Uh, uh, anyway, it's something to chew on. I, I don't know what else to add to that. If, if, uh, they don't want nobody else. Oh, why is gas ninety nine cents? Yeah, it's, it's, they don't know where that is, Dad. Far, Farwell, Michigan, which is up by Claire. My mother lives close by Farwell. And she said that gas was 97 cents a gallon up there. Um, so, who knows? And we potentially have Amy, Amy joining us. Why can't I speak today? I'm stumbling over my words. We have Amy potentially joining us if she's going to pull up a chair. She's coming out of the out of the cave. I'm going back in my cave after I get another. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> you should join us. <laughs> but anyway, I, I'm I'm going to try to keep this video short and. For your own good, so you don't listen to me trip over my words. Um, but yeah, we're gonna. I, I'm gonna keep try to keep this short because I have to do some grocery shopping today. As I mentioned, um, I'm gonna be making spaghetti and garlic bread. Well, I'm not gonna be making the bread. I'm gonna be cooking the bread, baking it. See, I can't talk today. I'm just off my game. Um, but I'm gonna prepare that. And I had some requests for more of my taco salad. I'm going to make some more of that. Our, great, our neighbor's down the road. Yeah, our neighbor's down the road. Because um, I told him I make taco salad. And, yeah, they've had it before. We're great. Good, we got new neighbors. Yeah, we got new neighbors. Um, a guy, a gentleman named Glenn, who used to live a couple houses down, he moved to Shields, which is a suburb of Saginaw. He moved out, and we've got, couple of young people who moved in, they have a, a little boy, and I, we, we talked to him for a few minutes, a couple minutes, <clears throat> seemed like a pretty nice guy, and uh, his little boy was outside, you know, riding his tricycle around, and he's only three or four, um, they're a nice guy, I mean, you know, he seems like a nice guy, yeah, and, and we have we have people driving crazy up and down this road. And, you know, I had to tell him, hey, hey, buddy, you know, you don't go out by the road. And I had told his guy, his dad, I said, you know, the 
People down here, they drive crazy. Yeah. I should just shut up and let Dad take over because I can't speak weird shit today. <clears throat> I'm tripping over my words. That it has. It certainly has. Shout out to all the friends and make sure that everybody's doing okay. And, you know, what's the next guy before you talking to him? Yeah. Because I can't wait for the bar to open. <laughs> but I'm going to talk to my I like the joke that Dad told me the other day. <laughs> he says, you know, he says, someone suggested that when all this quarantine stuff is over, <clears throat> I should go on a vacation where there's a lot of sun. I said, oh, yeah, where's that? He says, a bar with a hole in the roof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and good friends. And good friends, yeah. For months. Yeah, it's like uh, Man, what I seen you you're first? still roaming the planet? Man, I thought you hibernated. Yeah. I, I, wow. Well, it's been a while. You've aged in a month. <laughs> uh, I think uh, I think we all have. Yeah, I um, get to do nothing for my birthday. Bar, but I did drink at home. Yeah. <laughs> My birthday is coming up in July. Yeah. I'll be 34 on July 8th. You have yourself a vehicle. I should. Um, I should. Hopefully this will all be done Darn by right. the summertime. Um, I don't know. We'll see if, if we all just follow the rules and stay home and don't go out. If we don't have to. Um, yeah. It's sad that people can't go see their loved ones in the nursing homes. Yeah, I, I have, I have friends from all over, but in particular, I have a friend who lives in Pennsylvania, and her mom is in a nursing home, and they can only communicate through a window. Yeah. They can't have physical contact, they can't, you know, they have to be six feet or further away from each other um, and it's really hard on her because my friend um, her mom is in a nursing home she has dementia and uh, you know she's people with dementia they're forgetful and how do you explain like okay honey this is your daughter this, these are your grandbabies this is your family how do you explain if you can't talk to them yeah, I explain through a window yeah. So this stuff is serious. You and it's, start about it. it's because I talked to my friend, that uh, particular friend of mine from Pennsylvania, and she says, you know, she says, I don't know what's worse, the fact that I, I my mom has dementia or the fact that I can't actually go in to hug her. And it is, um, it, it is something to think about. It, it's reality hits home. Um and there's there's people who they they miss their you know they want to see their family and and there's grandparents who aren't in nursing homes who are being kept away from their grandkids because we all have to abide by the rules. And what is very sad is when a person passes, you can't even go to a funeral. Yeah, That's even worse. yeah. Um, when our uncle Keith passed away, they only allowed so many people into the parlor at a time. Usually funerals. Are, have large gatherings of people, family members and friends and things like that. When my uncle Keith passed away, they were only allowing a certain specific number of people into the funeral parlor at a time. And um, that, that, was, that was hard on everybody. It's not that we didn't love Uncle Keith, but um, it was... I Personally, I wanted to remember the, the good times I spent with Uncle Keith and, um, oh, I had some awesome times with Uncle Keith. Um, I did too when I was growing up. It, it was, you know, and, and with this coronavirus quarantine isolation stuff going on, there are people who, you know, before this had all come about, they're, I, I, without a doubt, and, and myself included, we had taken <clears throat> a simple text, a simple hug, all the, the things that are simplistic 
We have taken that for granted. Now that we're being told to stay home, shelter in place, uh, now, now we're waiting f for all of this to be done. And the hugs are going to be longer. The laughter is going to be louder. Um, the every every second after this, every moment that we spend with each other is going to be that much more. But to me, it's always been. I've always taken all of my interactions. But you know, before this, it's like okay, you know, I I hear from my friend today. Awesome. But I think it's it's going to ramp up the appreciation more after all of this is said and done. When all this comes to pass, people are going to be more um, appreciative and accepting. And, um, yeah, yeah. But um, that that's where we're at right now, and we just got to do the best we can. And to the, the people who, um, I'm going to throw this out there again this week, to the people who are... Uh, sending me information and screenshots and things about uh, this guy named Milk Tyson who calls himself a childhood cancer advocate. I'm aware of who he is and what's going on. Um, now, I'm not someone who, okay, well, I, I heard a lot of things, so it must be true. Well, someone, you know, like there, there was a, a sound clip where he, and I, I talked about this, I think it was last week or the week before, he was on a podcast. And he openly and gleefully admitted that he got kicked out of a homeless shelter for sexually harassing somebody. And then later on went to say, I'll sexually harass anything. Um, I, I'm aware of this. And to the people who keep sending me screenshots and clips and things about Milk Tyson, I'm aware of him. I, I point this out seemingly every week that I am aware, but people keep sending me um, messages about him. And I'll, I've said it a million times, and I'll say it a million and one. If you have evidence against the guy, then submit it to the proper authorities. Don't bring it to me. I'm not a proper authority. I appreciate you making me aware or saying, hey, did you hear about this? Yes, I heard about it. Um. As far as using his nonprofit organization to lavish or to furnish his own lavish lifestyle, that's what I've been hearing a lot. Um, again, I don't have the evidence for this. I don't have the proof that would demonstrate that that is the case. But if you do, <clears throat> I would encourage you to report it. You know what? What can I say about it? Um, and this is part and parcel the fact why I don't um, I don't get myself entangled with nonprofit organizations I don't associate myself with with nonprofit organizations um, if I help anybody I do it out of the kindness of my own heart and out of my own pocket so instead of donating to the organization instead of donating to the charity I just take out of my pocket and hand it over that's what I do, uh, and, and it, it's to me it's much better. I don't want to have to go through a third person or, or a third party to make sure that a specific family or a person gets the help they need. I would just rather hand them money or send them money or do something of you know to that extent or of you know something of that nature to help them. Um, I stay happily detached from any associations with nonprofit organizations or societies or organizations or leagues or, or cliques or clubs or anything of that nature. I, I stay far away from all of it. Um, I paid my dues when I was two years old. I don't owe my allegiance to anybody. You know, I'm, I'm coming at you as my own person as myself, this is how I present myself to you. I know what childhood cancer is. I've lived through it. I have seen and felt the worst. And you can't tell me different. I don't speculate. I know. And, I, and speaking of that, 
<clears throat> Speaking of um, <clears throat> childhood cancer, I you know I, I still keep in contact with many of my friends from the oncology world, and and they say, hey, how you doing, Jared? Or how you doing, Jared Bear? Or you know, how, how's it going in Michigan? Or how how's life going? Are you staying healthy, staying safe, doing this, doing that? Absolutely, I'm doing great. Life is pretty good right now. All things considered, you know, despite the fact that we are in the middle of a coronavirus, but hey, it could be a lot worse. Um, I wouldn't be sitting here that, you know, and you wouldn't be where you are and you wouldn't have your family and your loved ones with you. And, you know, I got my dad and, and Amy and, you know, that's something to be very grateful and thankful for. Um yeah, I got my brothers. I mean, I don't see my brother Wayne uh, as much as I like to, but hopefully that'll change soon yeah. when all this blows over. And um, I see Jay you know, once in a while, um, but I don't see I don't see my brothers a lot. And someone actually said to me, "You know, Jared, you are nothing like your your brothers." Well, no, you guys are all three different people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm nothing like my brothers. Um, I don't, I'm just nothing like my brothers. I, I'm my own person. And it's no cheap shot against my brothers. I love my brothers. But, you know, I'm nothing like Jay. I'm nothing like Wayne. Jay and Wayne are nothing alike. Um, I, I don't know. We're, we're individual people. But individual wrapped. <laughs> we, we're, we're all, yeah, we're all individually packaged. Um, except I don't, I don't wear a bow. Sorry, Jay. Sorry, Wayne. You guys wear bows. <laughs> because when you package something, you put a bow on top. So Jay, Wayne, I'm sorry. You got to take your bows off. <laughs> oh, I'm going to, I'm going to feel that later on. Yeah, Jay's gonna get a hold of it. What the fuck you talking about bows? What are you talking about a bow for, man? They know I'm just I'm just jiving, joshing, so Yeah, so um <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't see my brothers much. Wayne lives in Saginaw. Jay lives nearby. Um, yeah. Yeah. Enjoy ourselves. Yeah, and I <laughs> I'd like to speak to my mother sometime soon. Um, I haven't talked to her in quite a long time. Seems like forever. Oh, I'd written a new poem, too. It's called Love You More, which is um, it just kind of highlights words that mom and dad have said to me since I was a kid. Anytime I tell them I love you, they always say I love you more. And that's why... That's what that's where I get it from. That you know, my friends tell me, Jared, we love you, and I always say I love you more. Because that's all I heard growing up from my parents. Is that when I tell them I love them, they tell me I love you more. So if I tell you I love you more, that's where I get it. My mom and dad have always said that, so thank you. Um, but I'm gonna make this quick. Well, I try to make it brief. I've been here for almost forty minutes. I'm gonna and thus, I'm going to wrap this up, and because I have some shopping I have to get done today. Uh, I hope you all had a wonderful week. I hope this week will be uh, hopefully a good week for everybody. Um, Dad, any last words you want to add? <laughs> so Dad's got to feed the cat. Um, those are his last words. Um, take it easy and have a good day. Oh, take it easy have a good day. Okay. I, and feed your cats <laughs> if you have cats um as for me amy's not going to have any final words she's hide she's she's hiding out um tomorrow oh tomorrow is 420 so tomorrow i bet everybody who smokes weed is going to wake and bake First thing in the morning yeah that'll be reason enough for everybody to stay home <laughs> I look right at the bedroom door. Um, yes, Amy, we're talking about you. Yeah, tomorrow's 420. So every, you're going to be waking and baking in the morning. So I know Wayne is. I know I know Wayne will be. So her uh, and her nephew. And 
Um, hey, hey, it's yeah, my brothers. Hey, it's it's legal. So do what you gotta do. Whatever, whatever makes you happy. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and um, it's legal. shame marijuana. It's it's safer. It's legal. I mean, there's some with some restrictions, but it's it's legal. And you know, Very drunk driving, I can get you for that. I I haven't smoked pot in a long time, but I'm you know. I gave it up because I had a bad reaction to it once. That's reason number one. Reason number two, I just don't need it. I can do without it. Uh, but I'm not going to shame people who smoke it uh, because it helps and it's proven effective. So I can't shame something that's going to help somebody or, you know, work in somebody's favor. But anyway, enough green talk. I got to go get groceries or get some food to prepare for supper tonight. Huh. Yeah. Um, but I love you all. Thank you for watching another installment of the Sunday video update. My name is Jared Fuller. I will be back here next week. Next week is the 26th. Yeah, and, and Dan the man will see you soon. Hopefully, buddy. He's talking about Dan Richards, Dan Richards. Uh, from WKCQ, which is a country music station. Which is a country music station in Saginaw. Uh, and you can listen live to the Sunday Flashback tonight, 7 until midnight Eastern. Um, it's uh, 98fmkcq.com is the website, and it's on the screen. Um, you just click on Listen Live, and you, you can listen from anywhere in the world. Dan and it's, and his, yeah, his name is Dan Richards, and I'm sure, I'm positive that he will provide... Uh, the, the number to call to place a request for your favorite country song because there's a lot of country music he plays. And Jake, so and have a fireball for me there, Dan. <laughs> he's gonna be at the news or at the radio station. He's not gonna be doing any drinking. But um, when when this is all said and done, Dan, we will meet you at Billy's out in Clio for the Monday flashback. And rest assured, drinks are on us. So with all that being said, much love to all of you. Have a good week, and I'll see you next Sunday. Take care, guys. Peace out.